Hello, and welcome to Pharmacist Answers. I'm Cynthia, and I will be your host. You're listening to my Periscope broadcast, Turn Podcast. Hope you enjoy. One of the things that I hear a lot, and y'all may hear it too, is people who, people in their health niche, um, wanting to help people with their um, eating healthy and living healthy, they get on this kick about insulin being bad, and you don't want you don't want to do anything to cause your body to release insulin. And there's scientific reasoning behind that that they're probably trained and educated in, but the mainstream media seems to jump on that and just hear the the tagline "insulin is bad" and they freak out. And so they try to do all these things to, like, not cause insulin to be released in their body. And so um, so my title today, if you think insulin is bad, you should ask a type 1 diabetic. Because a type 1 diabetic would die if they did not have insulin. And the rest of us would die if we did not have insulin. That's the bottom line. So I wanted to give an overview of what ac- insulin actually does and how it's good for you, but also why... A lot of health coaches will educate their clients about insulin in a a small area can be bad. So if you've ever done a a sugar scrub um, to exfoliate your skin where you use some sugar and a little bit of water and maybe some essential oils and you use the sugar and you rub your hands and you may, some people do the sugar scrub on their face, or they'll do like a whole body scrub, and it makes your skin really smooth. It's because that sugar is abrasive, and it helps um, scrape off that dead rough skin that may be on your hands or any other part of your body um, that may tend to build up uh, rough skin or, or calluses. So imagine if that sugar was flowing through your blood veins, Um, If that sugar was, if that type of sugar solution was in your, in your veins um, and your arteries and getting close to your nerves and getting into the fluid of your eyes, imagine if it's that abrasive on your skin, imagine how abrasive that is inside your body. And people who have uncontrolled blood sugar, whether it's a type 1 diabetic who their insulin factory has just gone kaput and it's not working and they're having to, doesn't it dissolve? Well, sugar does dissolve in water, but if it's, if there's so much sugar in that water, it becomes, it's, think about syrup, um, how syrup does have, syrup is a liquid, but it's more sticky. Um, but so in a macro, in the macro view with me just looking at sugar dissolved in water or sugar dissolved in my blood, it still looks liquid. But when you get down to the microscopic levels, because the th- here's a fun thing about your capillaries, the capillaries in your eyes, in the tips of your fingers, the tips of your toes, the teeny tiny places in your skin, the teeny tiny places in your kidneys, they are barely big enough for one red blood cell to squeeze through at a time. That's tiny. So if it's that tiny, imagine how sensitive it would be to the other fluid around that tiny red blood cell being full of sugar. It would be just like you rubbing that sugar scrub on your hands and on your skin. It's really abrasive. And so if you have uncontrolled blood sugar, that sugar getting into those teeny tiny crevices causes damage to your eyes, to your nerve endings, to your capillaries, to your kidneys. And that is why it's important for, especially a type 1 diabetic, to do something to replace the insulin. Um, one, to avoid the damage, but because damage, that kind of damage can be deadly in the long run. But in a span of four hours, if they, they don't have the insulin, then their body can't, can't create energy. The insulin is the key that goes into the door of your cells and lets the sugar in. So then the cell can use that energy to do its job. So if your cells don't 
aren't able to get the sugar inside, then it can, your cells can't do its job. So your brain won't be able to do its job. Your heart won't be able to do its job. Your lungs won't be able to do their job. And that eventually leads to death. So the insulin is the key, and it's the only key. There's not an extra key somewhere hidden under a doormat that will eventually let the sugar in. The insulin unlocks the door, lets the sugar in, and then the cells are able to utilize the energy from that sugar to do their job and allow you to function, your body to function the way it's supposed to function. So insulin in itself is not bad. The second step to that is that insulin is responsible for fat storage. And we go, oh my God, I don't want to store fat. Oh my God, I don't want to store fat. So that is why what you consume in your food is important to, to be able to moderate. But you don't want to avoid everything and say, I, I want to do everything possible not to, not to make my body release insulin because that insulin is the key to your body being able to use the sugar that you eat so that it can do its job. And if you stop eating sugars, then, you're, then your body will eventually find a way to, to get the glucose that it needs to, do, to get the energy. So if you don't eat the sugar, then your body will attack fat. And that's good because a lot of people want to trim the fat off the edges to, to be able to lose weight and, and improve your body image. The, but if, and if the fat's not there, then your body will start metabolizing the proteins and that's the muscles of your body to be able to, and it has this magic trick that it can do to turn protein into glucose so it keeps functioning. Because honestly, your brain doesn't want, doesn't want to stop working. Your brain doesn't want you to die. So it's going to do what it has to do to be able to get the glucose that it can. So that's why sugars and fats in your diet are important in moderation. So this is the basic breakdown. Anything that you eat, sugar or fat-wise, gets turned into glucose by your liver. That glucose gets used by the cells for them to reach maximum efficiency. If there's extra glucose after the cell batteries are full and they're like, all right, I got all the energy I need. I don't need any more of this. So hold off and I'll get some more when I need it. Cells are full. There's extra glucose around. Your liver, insulin tells your liver to turn it into glycogen, which is essentially, it just hooks all the glucoses together and makes a really long chain. Um, think about when, like, if you've seen, like, a, like a whole line of kindergartners all holding hands trying to cross the street or, like, get through the museum or the zoo or something, that, that's kind of like glycogen. It just kind of links all these kindergartners together and makes a big long chain and, like, sends them off where it needs to go and holds it for later. If the glycogen warehouse is full, then insulin tells the body, tells the liver to turn those, that glucose into triglycerides. And that is what can clog up your arteries. That is what gets deposited in all your fat deposits. And the thing about your fat deposits is that they don't have a limit. And that is one of the reasons why health coaches are really big on on trying not to, trying to convince their glycogen warehouse, it's in your liver. Your liver holds on to all of that. And so if the cells use up the glucose that they've had and it says, hey, I need more energy and it's not time for you to eat yet, then the liver will then chop off those glucoses a little piece at a time and send out to the cells for the cells to use. So, um, so that's all, that all happens in your liver. So, again, insulin is not inherently bad. You don't want all of this sugar going on in your body due to bad habits and lack of self-discipline and stuff like that that create that causes insulin to get to that third step of depositing fat on your body. But step one of insulin and even step two of insulin is very important because the glycogen, your body, your body cells do processes even while you sleep. And you're obviously not eating while you sleep. So that glycogen storage is used for that long period of time of fasting when you're not able to, to consume the energy immediately and it be able to use the, the sugars that you get straight out of your intestines, 
when it absorbs the nutrients from your food. Um, so how much sugar in a day? That depends, and it's hard to, it's, it's, it varies by different people because your basal metabolic rate is important. The amount of activity that you do is important. Having a, a level blood sugar, um, when they measure the sugar in your blood, whether it's from like a blood draw at the doctor's office or when um, people with diabetes have to prick their finger and test, you want a certain amount in your blood so it's it's free flowing so your cells can grab it anytime they want to because the glycogen process can take a little longer um, but you don't want all this excess again because all that excess on that microscopic level can be damaging to your body over a long period of time so um, so when it when I try to read labels and read grams of sugar, um, it's hard to say what your what your your goal is. Um, now it, the information from health coaches that you get on from diet information and, and all of that stuff, uh, complex carbs are better than simple carbs because it takes the body longer to break it down so it doesn't just flood your bloodstream with all this sugar. Fruit sugar, eating natural sugars is definitely better than eating processed sugars because processed sugars usually end up more concentrated. You know, you you look at, um, and I'm not an expert on nutritional labels, so I don't know like the, the actual number of grams of sugar in, in like soft drinks and, and candy bars and things like that. But if you see something that's got 20 or 30 grams of sugar in it, um, coconut sugar. See, coconut sugar, that's a nat that's from a natural source. And so if that, and it's, it's less, less concentrated, it may be just as sweet, but when it comes to the amount of glucose, which is the actual sugar molecule that your cells use and that insulin is responsible for, for directing and hurting around your body, it's, it's not going to cause such a rise in, in glucose the way that concentrated or processed sugars from processed foods can. I'm a big fan of, of eating as natural as possible when it comes to <laughs> um, when it comes to the proteins that you eat, when it comes to the, the sugars that you eat, um, even natural fats in like healthy dietary fats that come from avocado or the, the protein sources that you eat, that is better for your body and your body recognizes it to that it looks more like itself than, than processed foods and fats and sugars. I love avocado too and avocado has actually been one of the very first foods that I've given my little girls when they're like, okay, your kids can eat real food now and not just milk. Avocado is one of my favorites because it has that healthy dietary fat in it and, and chubby babies are, fat, are healthy babies. Avocado makes me happy. Your body, your body is able to utilize things that look like, look more like itself than things that are foreign. So things that are synthesized in a, in a lab and then turned into food and stuff like that. So, so that's why, that's also why, um, certain supplements are better for, um, for you than, than other things. Um, one of the reasons why I recommend melatonin as a, as a first line sleep aid, because your body already makes melatonin. So if you take extra melatonin, your body already recognizes it as something that it makes. I tagged Rachel Mayo in my, in my title. She's an awesome, awesome doodler, but she, she's very creative, very awesome. She's been type one diabetic for almost 10 years and she is a, she is my diabetes hero. Um, I love her story. I love what she does and her positivity and the, and the education that she puts out there, um, of being outspoken about what type one diabetes is and how to live life happily and healthy with it. Um, she's got longevity ahead of her. And I actually did a type 1 diabetes versus type 2 diabetes summary overview. And that is one of the, the podcasts that you can download um, from iTunes. I will see y'all later. Bye. Thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe to the show on iTunes so you don't miss an episode. You can find the show notes at pharmacistanswershere.wordpress.com. If you want to join the conversation live, 
follow me on Periscope at Sin Hendricks, C Y N H E N D R I X. You can also share your questions and comments with me on Twitter at Sin Hendricks or email the podcast at pharmacistanswershere at gmail.com.